In this video, you will learn every Copertino widget with Flutter. Let's start right now. The Copertino app. In this example, we will try to create this application with the Copertino app instead of the Material app. So we will return the Copertino app. Inside, we have the mode banner to false. The theme will be the Copertino theme data. And we will use the same theme as we already did for all the other widgets. So the brightness will be dark. The scaffold background color will be this color. The primary color will be system orange and the home will be a text widget flutter map. But you will see that this is not exactly the app that we want. For this, we will need to use the Copertino page scaffold. And this is the next widget, the Copertino page scaffold widget. The previous widget was the Copertino app. Inside the Copertino app and the home, we will remove the text flutter map and we will create the Copertino page scaffold instead. This one will need a child, which will be a center widget. The navigation bar will be the Copertino navigation bar. The middle will be the text flutter map. And in the center, we will have the child icon, Copertino icons, the chairs. And this is what we will have on the screen. You can see that the navigation bar is the same thing as the app bar inside the scaffold widget. This was how to use the Copertino page scaffold with your Flutter app. The Copertino action sheet action. This is what you will have in your application at the end of this code. So we will start with the Copertino page scaffold that we have looked at in the previous widget. The child will be a center widget. Inside the center, we will have the Copertino button. The child will be a text Copertino action sheet. And when we press on it, this is what will trigger the show Copertino model pop-up. This one will need the context and the builder. The builder will be a context that will return the Copertino action sheet. The title will be a text flutter map. The message will be another text, your message. And inside we have the action, which is the Copertino action sheet action. We have the first one. Inside you will need a child, which will use a text do something and an onPress function. We will just return a navigator.pop context. We will do the same thing for another Copertino action sheet action. The child will be a text do something else. And the onPress will be also a navigator.pop. And with this, you have created a button that when you press on it, you have the two Copertino action sheet action, the do something and the do something else. The Copertino activity indicator. In the Copertino page scaffold, because we are in the theme of Copertino right now, we will have the widget center. In this one, we will create a Copertino activity indicator. And you can see that this trigger a loading animation icon, but you can also change the radius for 50 or change the color for orange accent. And this is the Copertino activity indicator. It's a loading animation, but for iOS. The Copertino alert dialog. Inside the Copertino page scaffold, we have the center. And inside this one, we have the Copertino button, which is this one. And when we will press on it, this is what we will trigger right now. The Copertino button will have the onPress function and the child text Copertino alert dialog. Inside the onPress, we will use the show Copertino dialog. This one will have the context and a builder. The builder will need the context and will return the Copertino alert dialog widget. This widget will have inside the title, this will be a text alert. The content will be a text. Are you subscribed to Flutter Map? And some actions that are the Copertino dialogue action. We will create the first one, the Copertino dialogue action with the child text no. We will set the is destructive action to true because this will make the button go red. And when we press on it, this will trigger the navigator.pop. We will do the same thing for another Copertino dialogue action. The child will be yes. When we press on it, this will trigger the navigator.pop. And you can see that we have created a Copertino alert dialog. The Copertino button. So we will have two different Copertino button, this one and this one. In the center widget, we will create a column. The main access size will be main access size dot minimum. And inside we have all the children. This will be the Copertino button. The first one doesn't have borders. We will have inside the onPress function that will return nothing. And we have the child text enabled. Right under, we will create a size it box just to create some spacing between those two widgets. And under the size it box, we will create the Copertino button dot filled. This one will have the onPress with nothing inside and the child will be enabled. And with this, you will have create two Copertino button. But keep in mind that if you replace the onPress with null, this will automatically disable the buttons. This was the Copertino button widget. The Copertino context menu. 
And this is what we will create, a button that will trigger two different actions. Inside the center widget, we will create a sized box first with the width and the height 100. Inside, we have the child Cupertino context menu. This one will take a child. In this case, it will be the image network and it's the YouTube image. The actions will be a list of Cupertino context menu action. The child will be a text action one and the unpress will have the navigator.pop context. We will do the same thing with another Cupertino context menu action. The child will be a text action too, and the unpress will be a navigator.pop. And with this, you have created an image button that when you press on it, you have two different options, the action one or the action two. And this was the Cupertino context menu, the Cupertino date picker. We will create a button and when we press on it, we will have access to a date picker. You can select the date, you can select the time also. So let's create this right now. The first thing you will need is a date time. And this is how date time works. We have the year, then we have the month, then we have the day, the hour, and the minute. Next inside the center widget, we will use the Cupertino button. This one will have a text Cupertino date picker and the onPress function will trigger the show Cupertino model pop-up. Inside we have the context and we have the builder. The builder will have inside the context and will return a sized box. The height of the sized box is 250. The child is a Cupertino date picker. And you will see it's very simple to set this up. I will start by putting a background color white. The initial date time will be the variable date time that we have created at the start. Then we have the argument on date time changed. This will give us a new time, which is the time that the user will select on the phone. And then we just need to set state and we say that the date time is now equal to the new time. Then you can use this to know the time and the date selected. You can use the 24 hour format if you want, and you can change the mode to use only the time by example. So if I click again, I will have only the time or you can have only the date. I will try again and you will see that this is only the date now. And if you want to display the date time on the screen, you can change the current text widget by something like this. And you will have the current selected date on the screen, the Cupertino page route. And this is how it will look. When we will press on this button, another page will come, but with the transition of iOS. And I will show you right now how to do this. The first thing you need is to create another class page two. This will be a stateless widget. And inside the build, we will return a simple scaffold, the background color blue gray, the body center, and the child page two. Now on the first page, inside a center widget, we will create the Cupertino button that fill it. This is the button. And inside we will have the text click for page two. The onpress function will trigger the navigator dot of context dot push and inside we will use the Cupertino page route. It's the same thing as the material page route, but for iOS. Inside you will need the builder, the context, and you will return the page two that we have created earlier. And just like this, you have created a Cupertino page route for your Flutter app, the Cupertino page scaffold. And this is how it will look. So let's do this right now. First, we will return a Cupertino page scaffold, but make sure that you use the Cupertino app instead of the material app. Inside, we will have the child, which will be a stack widget. The background color will be a color from ARGB. The navigation bar will be the Cupertino navigation bar. Inside, we have the background color with opacity. The middle is the title, which will be Flutter Map. And inside the stack widget, we will have only one children. It will be the image.network. The fit will be boxfit.cover and the height will be double.infinity. And this is how it will look. The Cupertino page scaffold is the same thing as the scaffold widget, but for Cupertino, which means for iOS. The Cupertino picker. You will see that when you press on the button, you have a selection. You can select between zero, one or two, and you will see the value on the screen change for the button. We will need to start with the int selected value equal zero. Then inside the center widget, we can create the Cupertino button dot filled. This one will have a child text value is equal to the selected value, which is currently the number two. For the onpress function, we will use the show Cupertino model pop-up. Inside we have the context and we have the builder. The builder will have a sized box. The width will be double that infinity and the height 250. The child will be the Cupertino picker. 
This one will have a background color white. The item extend 30. This is the height of the current item inside the list. The scroll controller will be a fixed extend scroll controller. We will also need children and unselected item changed. This will give us a new value. Okay, so now for the scroll controller inside this, we will create the initial item at zero. And you can see that every time we open this, this will show us the value one. Next inside the children, we'll have three different text widget, which will be zero, one, and two. And for the unselected item change, we will set state and say that the selected value is now equal to the new value. And just like this, you have created a Copertino picker with Flutter, the Copertino pop-up surface. And this is how it will look. You will click on a button and a pop-up surface will come up with the iOS style. For this, we will create a Copertino page scaffold with a center inside. And we want to create this button. So we will say Copertino button. Inside, we will have the text click me and the unpress will trigger the show Copertino model pop-up. Inside, we have the context and the builder. The builder will return the Copertino pop-up surface. The child will be a container. Inside, we have the Copertino white color. The alignment will be center, the width will be double dot infinity, and the height will be 400. And like this, you have created this pop-up. But now inside, we will create a child center with a Copertino button. This one will have the text close. And when we press on it, this will trigger the navigator dot pop. And just like this, you have created a Copertino pop-up surface, the Copertino scroll bar. And this is how it will look. We will have the Copertino scroll bar on the side of the list view. So we will return the Copertino scroll bar. Inside we have the child listView.builder. This one will have the item count at 50. So we will have 50 items. The item builder will have the context and the current index. And we will return a center widget with the text that will display the current index. The style will be font 30. And this is what you should see on the screen right now. But you can also change the visual of the scroll bar. You can change the thickness for six, by example, the thickness or the thickness while dragging, the radius, and the radius while dragging. This is what we see when we scroll normally, and when we click on it to drag, this is another visual. And this was how to create a Copertino scroll bar, the Copertino search text field. And you will see that this one have a leading and trailing icon already nested inside the widget. For this one, we will start with the final text editing controller, which we will call text controller. This one will be a text editing controller with the text flutter map. Inside the container, we will have a color Copertino color system orange. The padding will be 10 and the child will be a center with the Copertino search text field inside. And just like this, you have a search bar with the search icon. But we will also set the controller to the text controller that we have created. And now you will see that we have the text flutter map inside. And if you click the X, this will automatically delete the text inside. And this was how to create the Copertino search text field with flutter. The Copertino segment control. You can see that we have three different buttons, and when we click on it, we have on the screen the text of the button. And this is what we call a Copertino segmented control. The first thing we need is a nullable string called current text. And in the column, we will create a children. The first one will be a sized box height 50. The second one will be the Copertino segmented control. For this, we need the children, which will be three different texts. The first one is the flutter, which is a container. The second one is map. And the third one is YouTube. I will show you how to build this a little bit later. The unchanged value will return a string. With this one, we will set state and say that the current text is equal to the value. Under, we will create a sized box height 50. And if the current text is not equal null, then we will create a text widget with the current text. Otherwise, we will return an empty container. And this part is the text that you can see on the screen, YouTube. Now let's work on the containers of the Copertino segmented control. For the first one, the container color will be if the current text is equal to Flutter, which is this text, then we will return the color orange accent 100, otherwise it will be white. The width will be double dot infinity, the padding will be edge and sets dot all eighth, and the child will be a simple text Flutter. So you can see that when I press on Flutter, the color will be orange accent 100. Now we will do the same thing for map and YouTube. So for map, we will say the color is equal to orange or white, depending on the current text. The width will be double infinity, padding eight, and text map. For YouTube, it's the same thing. The color, the width, the padding, and the child. 
And with this, you have created a Cupertino segmented control with Flutter, the Cupertino slider. And this is what you will have on the screen with this widget. We will start this by creating a double current value equal to one. And inside the sized box, we will create a column widget with the children. The first one will be a sized box height 50. The second one is a text widget with the current value dot to string because we want to see the value on the screen. After we have another sized box height 50 and we will use the Cupertino slider. This one will need a value, which will be the current value that we have created. The minimum value will be zero. The maximum value will be 10. The divisions will be also 10. And when we change the slider, we will have a new selected value. This is a double. We will set state and say that the current value is equal to the selected value. And this is the Cupertino slider with Flutter the Cupertino sliding segmented control. You will see that you have a selection of multiple items and the segmented control will slide automatically with an animation. To create this, we will start with the int sliding equal zero. Inside the center widget, we will have the Cupertino sliding segmented control. The children will be zero, the text text zero, one text one, and two text two. So the children is a map. Next, we need a group value and this is the sliding int that we have created. Next, we have the unchanged value. This will return us a new int value, which we call the new value. We will set state and say that the sliding is equal to the new value. And just like this, you have access to a Cupertino sliding segmented control with your Flutter app. This one is pretty cool. The Cupertino switch. This will create a switch with the iOS theme. For this, we will start with the Boolean lights set as false. In the center, we will create a child Cupertino switch. This one will have the value light, which is a Boolean. The unchanged will return us a new value and we will set state and say that the light is equal to the new value. But keep in mind that you can also use only the switch widget and say dot adaptive and Flutter will automatically give you the Cupertino switch if you are on an iOS device and give you the normal switch if you are on an Android device. This one is also pretty cool the Cupertino tab scaffold. With this, you will be able to create a navigation bar with iOS style. So we will return this widget, the Cupertino tab scaffold, and inside we will have the tab bar, which is a Cupertino tab bar. I will explain you this in the next widget. So for now, we will just fill it with the items without explanation. You will also need to have the tab builder. This one will have the context and the current index of the tab builder. This will return a Cupertino tab view. And again, this is a widget that I will explain you right after the Cupertino tab bar. So for now, we will just fill it with the builder. And you will see that with this, you have created a Cupertino tab scaffold widget with your Flutter app. The Cupertino tab bar. And you will see that this is the widget at the bottom of this application right now. So you will need to create first a Cupertino tab scaffold. Inside you will have your tab builder, which will return the Cupertino tab view. I will explain this one in the next widget, but you will also need to have the tab bar. And this is where we will use the Cupertino tab bar. This one will have the items inside, which will be a list of bottom navigation bar item. The first bottom navigation bar item will have the icon. We will use the Cupertino icons home. The label will just be the text home. We will create another bottom navigation bar item. The icon will be the Cupertino icons dot settings and the label will be settings. And just like this, you have created a Cupertino tab bar with your Flutter app inside the Cupertino tab scaffold, the Cupertino tab view. And this is all the middle space of our application right now. So you will need to create a Cupertino tab scaffold first. Inside you will have the tab bar, which use the Cupertino tab bar. I already explained you this one in the previous widget. And now we will create a tab builder. This one will have the context and the current index. This will return the Cupertino tab view. For this one, you will need to have a builder. This one will have the context and will return anything that you want. For this example, we will return a center widget. The child will be an icon. And if the current index is equal to zero, then we will return the Cupertino icons dot home. Otherwise we will return the settings icon. But keep in mind that you can put anything inside the Cupertino tab view. And just like this, we have created a Cupertino tab view with Flutter. The Cupertino text field. First, we need to create a final text editing controller, call it the text editing controller, and we will set the initial text to Flutter map. Inside the Cupertino app, we will have the debug banner to false. The home will be the Cupertino page scaffold with a background orange. The child will be a padding, edge and sets.all 10. And inside the child center, we have the Cupertino text field. 
you can now put your text controller inside the controller and you will have access to a Cupertino text field. That's it. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. 